Hello everyone and welcome to this video for the add-on Fade which is available on the Blender Market. You can download the startup file in the description below which has the dinosaur and the animation applied to it. You'll need the add-on if you want access to all of these tune shaders and nature assets. And I will be doing another video on how I created this walk cycle for the dinosaur. So for those of you who are interested in animation in Blender, stay tuned for that. But here we're just going to be working with the add-on Fade. When you open the blend file, you'll see that there are two materials applied to the dinosaur, one for the body and one for the eyes, claws, and teeth. So I'll begin by working on the first material, which is the body. And after you download the add-on, you'll have this little fade tab in the side panel. And here you can select from any of these tune shaders. So I'll add the smooth tune shader. And you can see here that it's added these interesting shadow effects. We no longer need the principal shader, so we can delete that. Now let's take a look at some of the options on this shader. First we can change the color, although I would like to keep it close to uh, the base color of red or orange, maybe just brighten it up some. Now we have the border option, which creates this pen and ink style effect around the geometry. Now we have other options for things like glossiness and specular roughness, uh, but instead of using those, I wanna use the contour shading, which basically just highlights the curvature of the model. This keeps the shading from appearing too flat. And one last thing that I can do to highlight the curvature of the model is to use the Z shading. This creates the appearance of shadows on the underside of the model, and it can be adjusted with the Adjust Z shading. Here I'm just lowering the strength so that it's not too intense. Depending on what style of tune shading you're going for, you can use the Noise Distortion to make some of these highlights look almost hand-painted. Now, in this example, I won't actually use any of this noise, but I likely will later when creating the environment. So now I'm going to work on that second material. Uh, so if I press N to open up my side panel and add Smooth Tune Shader, you can see that it replaces the principal shader. So I can just plug that texture directly into the color, and now we have our eyes and teeth and nails back. And the first thing I'd like to do is add the border. And we also have options to control the border thickness. So if we zoom in on these claws, we can adjust that so that it's more visible. The next thing that I want to do is add some specular highlights to this material. To do that, I can simply slide the Add Glossiness slider all the way up. And then I can use the Specular Roughness slider to reduce the size of that reflection. Okay, so I think the shading for the dinosaur character is done, although I would like to discuss one more thing. It's a new feature that's available in Blender 2.93. Now, in order to demonstrate it, I'm going to go back to the first material, and I'm going to turn off the border. Next, I'll type Shift-A and choose Grease Pencil Object Line Art. Now keep in mind I have this object selected in the viewport. So if I select Object Line Art, now I have that sort of freestyle edge that's visible in the viewport. And if we click on the Grease Pencil tab in the Properties window, here we can adjust the thickness. Now keep in mind it only applies that border depending on the camera's perspective. But it's still very impressive to see that dynamically change as you scroll through the keyframes. I will, however, just delete that line art and instead go back to the uh, border option on the shader because it will create less lag while I'm uh, recording this video. But now I think I'm ready to start creating my environment. I'll start by typing Shift A and adding a plane and then tab to go into edit mode and S to scale. I'll also scale this additionally on the Y axis so that it stays in the camera's frame for the entire animation. Okay, so now our dinosaur has a ground to walk on. And I want to add some tune shading to it, but first we need to add a material. So if I come to the shader editor, I can click new material and then N to open the side panel, and then add that smooth tune shader. And the main thing that I want to do here is to change the color to a light brown and then reduce the intensity of that shadow with the shadow blend option. 
And even though it's a flat surface, I'm going to use the contour shading because it will show more contrast when I use noise distortion. And now the ground has a bit of a hand-painted look. So for the final animation, I want to use another new feature in Blender 2.93, which is the depth of field now available in Eevee. But we need to give the camera something to focus on. So in edit mode, I'm going to select the head bone and type Shift S and choose cursor to select it. Then I'll type Shift A and add an empty object and then position it right around the eye. Now with the empty selected, I can shift select the armature and then use Control P to parent it to the armature. Now we'll keep its position around the head throughout the animation. If I select the camera, I can click the camera tab in the properties window and check the box that says depth of field. And next to focus on object, I can choose empty. And you can see if I adjust the f-stop now, we'll start to get a blurry background. And we can test that out by adding some nature assets to the scene. If I switch from shaders to models, we see we have this drop down box with all of these options. And within each option, there are several different types. I'll start by adding these bushes to fill in the background. Then I'll move it to the far left and duplicate them with Shift D, rotating and scaling each one to create a little bit of variation. Once that's done, we can add some grass, which also has a variety of different types. And once you select one, you have the option to use this as particles to apply to the ground. Uh, however, I'm just going to add a single grass model. Because the scene is very small, I just want to add some grass to the background and then a few of the models in the foreground. Now, you'll notice that these grass models are casting shadows, which will likely be a problem once we move some to the foreground. So if I come over to the Material tab, under Shadow Mode, I can just select None. And just as I did with the bushes, I'm going to use uh, Shift D to duplicate these, and I'll rotate and scale them to give a little bit of variation. And once I have a few, I can just select all of them and use Shift D all the way down. So now I'll just check every frame to make sure that it looks okay. And it does. Uh, so the next step would be to add some of that grass to the foreground also. You may have also noticed that the grass itself is animated, so that creates a little more visual interest to the scene. Okay, so now I'll just uh, duplicate these grass models that are already selected and move them into the foreground, and now I can just scale and position them. And here I'm being careful not to cover too much of the character. I'm essentially just framing the scene with uh, that vegetation in the background and in the foreground. All right, so the environment's starting to look pretty good, uh, but it needs some more nature assets, uh, some, some different kinds of variation in there. So if we go back to the Fade tab in the viewport, uh, we're still at Models, so we can select some trees. And there's a few variations, but I'm going to select these oak trees because they have thicker trunks. And by default, they're quite low poly, so I can add a subdivision surface to them just to smooth out those branches. Now we won't actually see a lot of the trees in the background, but the whole point is just to make it look like there is a dense forest uh, behind the dinosaur. So uh, from the camera view, I can just select the trees and then reposition and scale some of them down so that we get as much of them into the camera view as possible. So now that I'm nearly finished the composition of the scene with all of these nature assets, I would like to add some volumetrics to the world material. And this will create a misty atmospheric effect. First, I'll go to the shader editor and then switch from object to world and then type shift A and go to shader principled volume shader. Now, once you plug that into the volume, you'll need to lower the density until the objects in your scene become visible again. I can also change the color to a nice cool blue to help balance out those warm tones in the scene. And in the Properties window under Volumetrics, I can change the start value. The object here is to only affect the background and not so much the foreground or the character. Okay, so now I'm nearly finished, and I'm pleased with what I have so far. But for the final animation, I did add some more of these assets that come with Fade, of which there are very many, and all of which have these tune style shaders applied to them. If you're interested in learning more about the Fade add-on, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find it on the Blender Market. 
there there's a ton of information on all of the add-ons features most of which we didn't even get to cover here but that's it for this video i hope that you guys are well if you liked the video then give it a thumbs up share it with your artists friends and i will see you in the next one thanks for watching